So we already had some introductory discussion on uh, sociological jurisprudence. One very important uh, sociological jurisprudence, uh, uh, important for us, uh, is uh, Nathan Roscopound. There are many others that uh, you must study, okay, but given the limitations, you know, that we have this semester, I'm going to focus on one of the most important ones, and that's uh, Roscoe Pound, uh, a very important American sociological jurist. Uh, now, as you know, sociological jurisprudence uh, is already different from, you know, other schools of jurisprudence, and we already had how... Uh, it is different and how it had emerged historically and in what context, okay. So, uh, uh, and one important distinction that we discussed is that uh, sociological jurists do not look at a law in the, in any abstract sense of the, you know, term, mm -hmm. nor do they, uh, you know, indulge in some uh, disconnected, you know, uh, uh, meta ideas, okay. I mean, disconnected from as we understand, you know, disconnected from the reality, okay. Some grand ideas that you have uh, access to by virtue of certain kind of philosophy. So, unlike you know, those approaches, uh, for example, the puritanical approach of legal positivism, and uh, uh, a little bit of uh, uh, and unlike uh, natural law school, okay, which has been criticized by many philosophers, okay, unlike that, this this school of jurisprudence concerns more with the uh, you know link the relation that law and and the society has, okay, how law affects the society, and how the society uh, affects the law. It says that whereas the others were concerned with the law in the broader social sense, Pound uh, was mainly focused on lawyers' law, the law that legislators, judges, and uh, authorized officials make. So as it says, Pound is considered more about, you know, what law means to the lawyers, okay, not just to the philosophers, okay, not to, uh, so what it, what it actually means for the judges, okay. So, for example, when judges adjudicate, what do they actually do? Okay, what's the process? Okay, what's what goes on in their head? Okay, what runs in the back back of their head as they adjudicate? Okay, so all those questions you know have been addressed by this philosopher Roscoe Pound. Okay, within the sociological school of jurisprudence, so he's a very important jurist that we need to study. Well, we have studied some philosoph you know philosophies that have already raised some questions. Uh, which have been raised by the, you know, uh, 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 sociological jurist, okay, earlier. But then um, it's nonetheless important that we study this particular uh, um, philosopher in a little more detail. So, yes, Roscoe Pound is a very important philosopher, an American sociological jurist, okay. He tried to understand law in a broader social sense, okay that is lawyer's law okay not just from conceptual you know philosophical perspective but as it is understood by us you know within the social context okay so he tried to understand what lawyers do when they you know do law okay so it's lawyer's law okay so essentially laws as you know made by the legislators okay as are interpreted and adjudicated by the judges okay so he's concerned about all that, okay? So he's concerned about how actual, you know, legal systems with all its different organs, its different institutions and different methodologies that they, uh, you know, apply, how the totality work. And so he, he all makes certain observations uh, in that regard, okay, regarding how this idea of legal order, okay, had you know, emerged and evolved, okay. He talks about development and evol evolution of legal order and then finds that, okay, in early times, okay, especially during Greco-Roman um, period, there has been a status quo. You don't see, we, we already discussed this also in the context of, if you remember, and remains discussion on law. 
So he says that, you know, there was a time, okay, during Greek Roman period, you see a lot of uh, status quo, okay, in the philosophy. We talk about cosmic order and whatnot, okay. Then, uh, you know, he's generalizing, so he's not going into great details, okay, within the different philosophical approaches. But then you see that uh, then comes a different era, okay, especially in the works of uh, Jeremy Bentham and uh, John Stuart Mill. And now we talk uh, in terms of, you know, individual, the idea of modern individualism arises, okay. We talk about individual liberties, rights, freedoms, okay, it's all about uh, human beings as, you know, isolated entities, okay. So that's the transition that we see. But then, you know, the idea of individualism, the idea of, uh, you know, us being isolated, you know, island life individuals, okay, that era comes to an end, okay. We no longer talk only in terms of individual rights, okay, individual liberties as against, you know, others, the state. Now, you know, because of changes, transitions, okay, that you, that happen in, this has happened in the society, especially during this industrial revolution and subsequently, okay, you see that, well, it is not only about, you know, my claims, my rights, okay, my liberty, okay, that for society to exist, quite often what I claim to be as my right, my, you know, interest, okay, my liberties, okay, they do come in conflict with, you know, other kinds of interests, okay, it could be of the uh, individual, it could be of the society or it could be of the public, okay, so quite often you see that what we know as rights, okay, you know, rights in the, you know, traditional sense of the term, those are actually certain kinds of interests which are protected by the, uh, you know, uh, by the legal order, okay. So in modern times, we can no longer talk about those ideas of rights only from individualistic per in a perspective because we are not island-like isolated individuals. We are also connected. We also have to coexist, cooperate, okay? So quite often in such a society as more and more, you know, movement of people, ideas and, you know, objects happen. So you see more conflict of interest in such a society, okay? So in modern times, okay, in today's times, okay, Roscoe Pound talks about, uh, you know, reconciling this conflicting interest, okay. So the different kinds of interests which might be there, okay, they come in conflict. So the uh, these conflicting uh, interests are to be uh, reconciled, okay. Uh, keeping in mind that, okay, max to maximum strength and efficiency uh, of the organized society. So how do you do it so as to, uh, you know, gain, achieve maximum strength and efficiency uh, within the organized society? So he says that how do we reconcile then in order to achieve maximum strength and efficiency? Okay, so we reconcile conflicting interests with minimum friction and waste. Okay, he does not say that we completely restructure overall the entire society. It does not say that, okay. It's, it's not talking in the revolutionary sense of the term. No, not that, okay. He's saying that, well, we have to uh, deal with this business, okay. So how do we do that? We have to do it, uh, do it by uh, reconciling com 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 competing interests uh, with minimum friction and waste. Uh, minimum friction and waste. So we have to, uh, <coughs> we do not restructure the society. We merely ensure, what, so while legislators legislate, while judges adjudicate, uh, they have to do the same just the way engineers, for example, build a structure, okay? So they test the best model which is able to, uh, for example, uh, withstand the uh, for example, if one is constructing a bridge, okay, the structure has to be such that it's able to bear the load, okay, it's able to bear the stress, okay, so that's how it is to be done. So, yeah, so when you do that, how do you do that? You ensure that there, there's fewer, you know, minimum uh, friction and no waste. So, when you reconcile conflicting interests, you basically 
do it in such a way so that there there is very little you know who, uh, what, what should I say uh, wastes of um, very little sacrifice of individual interests or whatever other interests are there okay that's essentially the idea so you might see that it's it it seems like kind of you know a utilitarian argument because utilitarians also talk about maximizing you know happiness pleasure minimizing pain okay so how is this any different the difference uh, is this that well if you remember uh, bentham okay um, uh, he says that well it's only the legislators who deal with this business of maximizing okay so when they make uh, policies they do that keeping in mind the utilitarian principle okay of maximizing happiness but then once uh, that's done once laws are made then we do not go back to doing the same thing over and again so judges you know so you remember uh, that once the laws are legislated he does not believe in judges you know having the room to further legislate okay fill in the gap okay so he talks about comprehensive code unlike that here sociological jurists do not say that okay so that even judges while they adjudicate they do the same thing uh, reconcile complete you know competing interests with minimum friction and wastes so a lot of you know a lots of ideas that you studied earlier okay are sacrificed in this okay uh, uh, you know philosophy so for example as we understand the idea of rights okay that individual rights already exist and then judges adjudicate based on those you know rights that already exist okay for example what Dworkin would say that's not what they believe in so judges decide matter in the light of certain policy considerations okay so if they do so that means that rights uh, do not already exist so while they adjudicate they recognize you know uh, they basically uh, you know protect certain interests you know obviously at the cost of others but with minimum friction and waste okay so that's essentially how it is different from uh, utilitarianism so how does a judge uh, do this whole thing so how do they reconcile uh, co conflicting interests so it says that there are essentially three steps okay so the first thing would be that the judge has to reconcile certain interests okay so before you go about reconcile okay so reconciling so the judge has to recognize certain interests so that so this interest that interest that interest exists so for example uh, individual interest in you know being able to abort an unwanted you know pregnancy uh, so that might come in conflict with for example society's interest as is the case as is claimed in many different places in protecting uh, life or, uh, okay so while a judge adjudicates judge has to balance between these two you know conflicting interests as is the debate you know the ongoing debate okay there could be many examples okay so for example when we talk about uh, freedom of you know uh, contract okay uh, quite often you know the idea is that you know everyone's uh, everyone possesses free will so as long as they voluntary without coercion get you know enter into contract it's fine okay but then we know that in real in reality uh, there are uh, many differences okay so yeah so one side might claim talk about freedom of contract the there might be another interest for example that that could be about protecting labor rights okay protecting rights of working women so you see those different interests quite often come in conflict but it has to start with recognizing uh, the existence of these different interests so yeah and then uh, judge has to you know define limits okay within which such interests will be legally recognized and given effect to okay well, judges uh, recognize that certain uh, interests exist, but not every interest will be, you know, effectualized. Okay, so uh, definition of the limits, okay, within which such interest will be legally recognized and given effect to has to be there. Okay, and once that is done, then uh, they have to, uh, I mean, whether legislators or judges, okay, they have to secure those interests within the limits that they have justified that we can accept this interest only up to some certain extent so for example my liberty to you know uh, 
make money okay uh, gain wealth uh, well I I am I I have an interest there okay but do I have an unlimited interest okay so for example uh, I cannot for example you know practice some kind of uh, profession or you know for example I cannot uh, you know get into a, for example I cannot um, do certain things that might degrade the environment okay so I have an interest in making money and generating profit wealth but then there are other interests okay so those limits are laid down so my now my you know rights my interests are secured within the limits as a defined okay so as i was telling you so this entire process of uh, reconciling uh, conflicting interests he he essentially draws an analogy uh, between lawyer and uh, engineer okay just the way an engineer for example i was telling you earlier if an engineer has to uh, build a bridge uh, the engineer has to uh, come up with the most efficient structure which is able to withstand the wear and tear uh, load bear uh, bear load okay mm, for example it has to mm, withstand the wind okay earthquake whatever okay so it has to come up with the best model okay in a similar way the lawyer okay when he says lawyer is essentially referring to the legal community so for example if a judge okay where to adjudicate has to while adjudic adjudicating do the uh, whole thing in the sim in a similar way as engineer would do okay so that would involve balancing competing interests okay you tell you you give preference to one interest more than the other then there'll be disbalance okay so has to be a balancing of competing interests so essentially the idea of rights fall apart okay in this uh, taken to extremes okay rights are essentially about protecting certain you know claims certain liberties okay if that's the case okay they seem to be sacrosanct okay but for uh, sociological jurist as you as you see in the case of roscoe pound it's not like that you have to look be, you know beyond that okay beneath that okay what's actually happening what actually happens when we talk about rights you see that there are certain rights so, so there are certain interests some interests obviously are weightier than other interests so while balancing those things should also be kept in mind so yes uh, so that's that's what the idea is so it involves balancing competing interests like the way an engineer would do so what are interests then okay interests as you already know okay something that goes to my advantage okay it could be in the form of some claims some wants some desire as against the legal order okay so some interests will be recognized others won't now Rothko uh, talks about broadly three different kinds of interests so the first kind of interest you start with the individual okay so let's he talks about individual interest what you usually see in the private law okay so for example in the individual interest could be with respect to personality okay so what could be the individual interest okay with respect to personality so for example my, my, my physical person okay or my freedom of will my reputation honor privacy those would come within the individual interest okay of personality then beyond my personality there are also my proprietary uh, property interests okay that i might have so property or substance okay it could be pro property it could be my freedom of contract uh, whatever okay mm, employment etc etc and apart from personality and property there are also questions about personal relations okay or domestic relations so individuals interest in family in marriage okay in so for example wife's interest in husband children and vice versa so these are individual interests now the interests do not end there okay interests are not just uh, you know individual interests we are not isolated island like beings okay disconnected from the others okay so apart from this there are also public interests okay now what are public interests essentially the interests of the state you can say okay what what concerns with the public law so claims of the politically organized society that is the state so it is the state's interest so where do you find it you find it in the constitutional law and criminal law okay it could also overlap though with other interests but generally this is where you find it okay it relates to the dignity of the state 
So there are two classifications of public interest as well. Okay. So interests of the state as a juristic person and interests of the state as a guardian of social uh, interests. Okay. So that's how this interest also overlaps with the third kind of interest. Okay. One is the state's own okay interest as a jurist person state holds property and the state enters into contracts so all those things are there apart from that state is also a guardian of social interest okay so it could be protector of morals it could be protector of you know safety security etc etc so these are broadly public interests then there is another kind of interest known as the social interest so, so social interest is not about in uh, so obviously it ultimately boils down to individuals but then it's beyond the individuals it, it's the concerns with respect to the society okay so these are social concerns not mere individual concerns the things that we are concerned as a collectivity so it could be for example security okay it is individual concern obviously but it is as much a social concern so security safety peace and order public morality all those you know come within social interest okay now he has classified social interest as well so he talks about social interest in general security so obviously a society has uh, concerns about general security what could those be so it could be general health okay peace and order security of acquisitions transactions and then you there is a, uh, there is another interest okay societal interest known as security of social institutions it could be the household okay uh, society has an interest within uh, uh, with respect to the domestic you know is, uh, you know matters okay so yeah households have to be protected there could be societal economic interest there could be religious interest and then there are general moral morals okay then there are general morals okay so could be for example uh, you know uh, what could those be there could be many different examples of all that but because the ideas are changing i do not want to but let's say that you know pornography could be a, a concern about a concern of general morals okay prostitution these are moot questions okay so yeah then conservation of social resources okay mm, general progress okay it could be economic cultural or political and then society's interest the third one is society's interest with respect to individual life okay so individual lives okay individual life according to the standards of the society but then you know there could be individual interest which could come in conflict with those standards you know laid down in a society but then at this stage we are not going to all those but all that we are looking at is that there are these different kinds of interests that Roscoe Pound has identified. But as I told you, they are not to be, you know, treated as, you know, watertight, you know, compartments of interest. No, not that. They quite often uh, overlap. So, for example, take, for example, the case with uh, taxation. There is a public interest with respect to tax, okay, uh, which is quite clear, okay. But then taxation also affects me individually i am taxed okay so my property is affected okay so yes it also affects my individual interest but then taxation is also important because the uh, whatever the uh, you know proceeds of it goes to the protection of the society that we are part of so there is a social interest as well so yeah he merely says that well these are the different kinds of interests he's not saying that they are completely separate they overlap to a great extent there could be many such examples taken to show the same now uh, when there is a conflict of interest okay of all these different kinds okay what happens then uh, they are to be reconciled as we discussed okay with uh, list minimum friction and waste okay and who 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 does it so that reconciliation of conflicting interest is done by the legislators legislators at the level of legislation and then obviously when the matters come before the court they he's saying that even courts do the same thing now if you were to go by this position then you have to say uh, say that well judges uh, when they adjudicate 
they even create laws. So, but then, which is uh, criticized by other philosophers that we have already studied. Now, well, uh, we know that rights, uh, your interests have been recognized. We have done uh, recognition, uh, you know, reconciliation of conflicting interests. Then what? Well, then we need seek, need to secure those interests which have been, you know, recognized and reconciled. Okay. So how is that done? So it says that it's done through uh, the device of, for example, legal person. Okay. Law recognizes legal personality. Okay. And it and there is attribution of certain claims, certain duties, liberties, powers, immunities. We are going to discuss these ideas in the next semester. Do not worry. So these are different manifestations of you know, rights, as Hopal would say. So yes, first we uh, recognize legal personality and then we attribute uh, claims, duties, liberties, powers and immunities to those legal persons. Then once that happens, the society also has to put in place a remedial machinery, okay, that will, if there is any violation of the same, then there will be punishment, redress or before that even happen, happens, there has to be prevention as well, okay. Now one important rem remark that he makes is that when we reconcile this conflicting interest, we should do uh, the same on the same uh, do that on the same plane so if there is a uh, uh, conflicting you know it, there are different conflicting interests we have to bring them on the same plane so saying that if we are to uh, you know reconcile some individual interest with respect to with that of uh, social interest you bring that individual interest with, within the social interest and then see where the balance tilts okay so that's essentially uh, what he's talking about now the question remains as to how to reconcile okay so that we have already discussed to a great extent you remember it is that the judges or the legislators should try to secure most interest with least friction and waste okay so that's the mantra that's the principle least sacrifice of interest okay so they as i said okay not really problematic when it when it comes to legislators legislators okay but then problematic quite uh, you know when it comes to judges okay so he's advocating judicial pragmatism okay so it says that judicial pragmatism okay is much more important than any grand theory so the idea is that satisfy as many wants with least sacrifice is that okay so our traditional understanding is that if there is a right, okay, right has been recognized, okay, it has to be protected, even pr when the protection of that right involves sacrificing a lot of other interests. Quite contrary to that, saying that, well, it's not really about that, it's about satisfying as many human interests, protecting as many, you know, human interests and wants with less sacrifice. So, uh, that's essentially what the idea is. So, there might be certain claims, okay, that ask for too much sacrifice, okay, such claims will not be admissible, in, even when we talk about that in terms of rights, okay, that's essentially the idea. But at the same time, it, this idea does not give the court a, an absolute free play, complete free play to do whatever they want, okay. So the courts have to, within that, you know, idea of pragmatism, has to maintain some consistency, that is also necessary. Because even when they do, you know, create the law, they have to maintain the pretense that, well, they are adjudicating, okay. So, saying that, while the courts do this, the courts can't be arbitrary in choosing between competing claims, okay. So, if there are similar cases, the like cases have to be treated alike, okay. So, in similar cases, courts cannot, should not come to different conclusions and if they do then the faith in the judiciary will go down okay then he says that there has to be a rational basis to recognize new rights or to restrict existing rights so it cannot be based on whims and fancies of the judges that they recognize new rights or restrict existing you know rights there has to be a rational basis now it does not say that what rational, what reason it has to be. You know, at the end of the day, when we reason, it is based on you know certain you know background ideals, certain background theories, certain you know background principles. You know, 
that we do that rationalization rationalization and he's saying that well rational basis has to be there to recognize new rights he does not go beyond that okay as if it's crystal clear saying that reasoned decisions have to be give, given okay so in the light of different facts you know mistaken adjudication or policy grounds okay so in the light of that they have to give reasoned decision now as uh, you know interesting and exciting as it sounds uh, but there are very much various problems okay so roscoe pound has his own share of criticisms okay uh, so which is quite obvious given some very uh, uh, you know problematic remarks you know in the ideas that you see in his uh, i see him making or in his theory okay the idea is that so for example when he talks in terms of waste and friction okay what does it actually mean okay uh, we have to understand that okay when the judges adjudicate it's not merely about you know lubricating a machine okay it's not like that okay these are human affairs so it's not merely about uh, you know that okay so yeah he says that well it is uh, essentially about conflict of interest okay so when we talk about conflict of interest judges have to reconcile conflicting interest with list you know friction and waste okay but how does the judge do that okay so does the judge need a pre-planned design which is the case with with that of you know engineers okay he draws an analogy from engineers okay but when the uh, engineers go about building something okay they start with a grand plan design okay so there's a philosophy there based on which that design is made and ultimately they achieve that plan with you know uh, least friction and waste okay so judges cannot go about deciding matters okay without that plan so what plan would that be he does not say anything so different judges coming from different philosophical you know background will have different plans uh, so you know, how does you know roscoe pound address that problem then uh, along with that okay he says that uh, uh, there's another problem and that is that uh, so do claims always pre-exist okay or are they sometimes created by the law these claims that we keep talking about okay claims of interest okay do they already exist sometimes these interests are also creatures of the law okay what about that okay uh, what about that so uh, laws might also end up creating interests not that interest lead to you know, laws recognizing those interests so that has to be addressed as well and along with that you know many say that it's not really the interest but the ideal okay which is to be achieved and while you achieve that ideal uh, you, you go for sacrificing some interest and not others okay so that ideal is also very important so essentially the choice is between different ideals and not really a matter of balancing uh, interest the matter of balancing interest comes once you have chosen the ideal which is to be achieved okay and at the end of the day when we talk about you know balancing competing interests okay how do we do that what scale do we use okay essentially the question of uh, ideals that you have competing ideals and how do you reconcile such competing ideals so these are some of the criticisms of the um, idea uh, of sociological jurisprudence that roscoe pound uh, you know talks about so uh, given the paucity of time i'd like to end our discussion you know here and your uh, exams are uh, almost here so there's just one last topic that's left and I'll upload that as well very soon on legal realism.